After graduating from college, Raiden struggles to find a job and misses the chance of being with the right guy. In the opening scene, we are introduced to the protagonist Raiden Malby's vlog about her graduation day. As she gets ready, she talks about how excited she is to be graduating, and essentially shows off her plan. Almost everything's been fulfilled in the plan, except getting a job at Happerman and Browning, where she'll discover the next great American novel. In the midst of it, we're introduced to her best friend Adam, as well as the girl she doesn't like, Jessica Bard, who happens to be the valedictorian. Before she signs off, she wishes herself good luck and invites everyone to say hi. On campus, many students wearing long capes can be seen entering the university, among them a fulfilled Raiden, ready for life's next challenge. Students and their loved ones gather in the hall as Jessica is called to give a speech. As she begins, Raiden's family bursts through the door, drawing all the attention. So, as they proceed to sit down they make a lot of noise, and no one seems to be focused on Jessica. Regardless, as she finishes her speech the crowd rises up with the loudest cheers. At the ceremony, each student is seated with their family as they enjoy lunch. Raiden's father Walter raises his glass for a toast to her name, and given that Adam's family couldn't make it, they also raise a toast in his name. Given that she's in search of a job, Walter suggests Raiden works for him, but Adam lets them know about the interview. Excitement can be seen on Raiden's face, because she's positive that they'll give her the job, so much so that she decides to rent out an apartment in the same block as the work building, just hours before the interview. Her idea is bizarre, and Adam seems to be aware of that. Getting closer to her, he asks whether she has the finances to rent such an apartment, and she assures him that she does. On their way to the interview, Raiden panics that they're not going to make it in time, and a car ends up slamming into theirs. They might be fine, but the car doesn't look in great shape, meaning that they can't get to the building on time. Even more than before, Raiden starts panicking, and Adam tries to comfort her by informing her that the insurance company of the other driver will cover the damages. Unfortunately, the driver speeds off, leaving them on the street. Not having any other choice, Raiden decides to walk to the building, and luckily she gets there on time. Walking in, she is amazed by the company and envisions herself working there one day. As she gets to the right floor, she goes up to the secretary ready for the interview of her life, but the secretary informs her that they're two hours behind. Thinking that it won't be a big deal, she takes the application form and goes to take a seat, when she sees at least 15 people waiting for the same interview. Nevertheless, she sits and waits until she's the only one left. Getting her hopes up, she walks into the office with a smile, and firmly shakes the hand of the CEO. The woman has already seen Raiden's impressive portfolio, so she asks her why she wants the job. Raiden pours her heart out, letting the woman know that books are the only thing she knows, and the only job she sees herself doing. Ever since she was a child, she remembers wanting to read more than spend time with the other kids. The lady doesn't seem to be so impressed with Raiden's honest answer, so she just thanks her for coming in. Confused, Raiden's face drops once she realizes that the woman wasn't impressed, but she doesn't do anything about it. On her way out, she bumps into Jessica Barr and is surprised to see her. Quite proudly, Jessica lets her know that she was called in for an interview, but what tops it all is the warm greeting from the lady who pretty much ignored her. As expected, the landlord doesn't rent her the apartment, despite her promising to find another job. In the evening, she and Adam spend some time in the closed grocery store, where he tries to make her feel better. He explains that it just simply wasn't meant to be, and that she shouldn't stress about it. To make her feel better, he hands her an Eskimo bar, basically an ice cream sandwich. She giggles, not really wanting to, but doing it so it makes him happy. Her mood immediately changes for the better, so he lets her know that this is the girl he fell in love with. As she continues to talk about their platonic relationship, she jokingly kicks him and he grabs her foot. Her cold foot makes him flinch, so he starts massaging it to warm it up. As he massages her foot, he goes up her leg, and tension can be felt between them. However, their moment is cut short as they hear a noise in the background. Following the noise, they're met with the sight of Adam's father being inappropriate with one of his workers, something they didn't expect to see. Given that his father wasn't at the graduation, Adam decides to confront him about it. But luckily they leave the store quickly, not wanting the situation to escalate even further. Left jobless, Raiden has no other choice but to move back in with her parents. They don't bring only her, they bring her car as well, but Raiden becomes mortified once she realizes that her father plans to fix the car himself. Laughing it off, Walter is confident that he can fix the problem, so he asks her not to worry. Moving to the truck, he helps Adam get down from Raiden's desk. As they're trying to move it inside, Raiden's brother Hunter runs over to them, begging Adam to help him with the project. Amidst the chaos, Water accidentally steps in poop, and immediately knows whose poop it is. Angrily, he power walks to the house next door, ready to have it out with his neighbor. Raiden runs after him, trying to de-escalate the situation. As her father knocks, a beautiful Latino man opens the door, and Raiden is in awe. Their neighbor picks up the litter and apologizes, promising that he will talk to the cat, 
As the days go on, Raiden tries to keep her confidence at a high level. She goes to not two, not three, but four interviews, and none of them go in her favor. From practicing her speech and choosing her words wisely, to giving it her all, she struggles to get a call back. At an all-time low, she feels as if she's about to lose it. At a particular interview, as her mother is in the car scolding Hunter for licking other people's heads, and she returns with a frown, admitting to unintentionally calling her interviewer fat by asking her whether she's pregnant. Her mother Carmela tries to make her feel better by promising to speak to her publisher friend, but Raiden lets her know that she's deceased. They get a call, so they rush to see Grandma Maureen, who's trying out coffins for when the time comes. Laying in an emerald green coffin, she asks for their advice, but they can't seem to fathom the situation. She asks Hunter specifically, and he thinks that her trying different coffins is awesome. As they go to the office to discuss size and characteristics, as well as the prices, Raiden and Hunter stay in the room with the models. As she walks around, inspecting every coffin, she hears some growling from inside one. Getting closer, she gets jumped scared by Hunter, which makes her fall backward, pushing one of the coffins. The coffin falls apart, so they end up buying it and taking it home for Grandma Maureen. In the evening, Raiden shakes her leg anxiously as her father walks in and shows her the diploma that's finally been delivered. Instead of being excited, she doesn't even look at it, returning to the newspaper job listings. Walter realizes that Raiden has had no luck finding a job, so he suggests opening up a business for belt buckles and making her the vice president of the company. Having had enough, Raiden goes to her room to slam her head in peace. They're not the only ones having it out. Adam's father tries to get Adam to open up the letter from the university in New York, but Adam doesn't look like he's rushing to do it. They start going back and forth, so his father reassures him that he doesn't care about his decision, he just doesn't want Adam to end up like him, struggling and overworking. Adam doesn't say anything, so his father leaves him alone. The following evening, all of the students gather at a party. Per usual, Jessica finds herself the center of attention, so she goes about asking what everyone's doing after graduating. While some of them plan to get a master's degree, some are already working, like Jessica, at Raiden's dream place. They get to Adam, and he lets them know that he might go to Columbia University, but then they ask Raiden. She doesn't lie, but informs them that she's interviewing and keeping her options open. Jessica takes her chance to mock Raiden and embarrass her because she's unemployed, and it upsets her. Storming out to the pool, she admits to feeling like a loser, since everyone's already making something of their diplomas and she isn't. Wanting to make her feel better, he opens his arms and she falls into his embrace. The topic of college is still discussed, so she tells him that he's already secured by going to law school, but he doesn't seem to be thrilled about it. Getting on the edge of the diving board, he asks her to join him, and even though she rejects him at first, she eventually joins him. He tells her that he's opening a club on Friday, and instead of being excited for him, she questions whether he wants to be a lawyer or a musician. He begs her not to question him, and to just be with him on Friday. Walter seems to be taking his business idea seriously, as we see him purchasing buckles from a sketchy guy. As the guy leaves, Raiden comes home and helps her father get the boxes in. Given that he's considering her for vice president, he asks her for some marketing ideas, as well as her own wishes. Taking the chance, as vice president, she asks him for her car back, claiming that it's difficult to chase a job without a vehicle. Like any other parent, he goes on about the difficulties of life and how she needs to try harder. Feeling unappreciated, she explains how difficult it is to find a job, and asks him not to say that she's not trying. Next, he advises her to be more realistic, and that's how she lands a job at the store he works at, selling suitcases. She seems to be struggling to keep a smile, so her father advises her to be more enthusiastic when the next customer comes. Unfortunately, the next customer is Jessica Bard. She is surprised to see Raiden working in a store, but Raiden promises that it's temporary. It's obvious that Jessica wants to humiliate Raiden by making her get up and down to show her the suitcases she doesn't really need. But what tips the boat is her advice to stay strong in hard times. Raiden loses it, throwing the hat on the floor, and tells Walter that she's done. The following morning, while Carmel is worried about their youngest son being weird, Walter decides to surprise his daughter. Asking her to come to the garage, he slowly opens the door to reveal her car, looking brand new. Raiden can't believe it, so he suggests she watch the engine as he starts the car, to see whether everything's alright. As Walter presses the pedal a bit more, the car goes in reverse, and before he can stop it, it goes over the neighbor's The whole family stands in a circle, not sure of what to do next. Someone has to tell the neighbor, and they decide Walter should be the one breaking the news. However, they ask Raiden to go over as well. Walter knocks in a pattern that Raiden finds extremely offensive, given the occasion. They start going back and forth on whether she's right or not, so when the neighbor opens the door, Walter blurts out that his cat is deceased. So their neighbors gather around for the funeral of the cat. Walter buries the cat in a pizza box, trying to hurry up as much as possible. Once the ceremony finishes, Walter hands him his card and wishes him well. Feeling embarrassed, Raiden starts apologizing for everything, but he cuts her off by asking whether she wants breakfast. She's taken aback, so he asks her again, 
and she agrees to stay. He makes her some delicious pancakes, and she eats until she's stuffed. Getting up, she starts cleaning her plate, but he asks her not to. She drops the plates to look around, and as she inspects the house, she realizes that it's exactly the same as theirs. Seeing a chunk of plastic in front of her, she asks what it is, and he blows it up in a second, revealing a couch. The night is still young for the neighbors, so they sit in the living room enjoying some wine. She lets him know about her situation, and admits for the first time that her expectations have been way too high. Having expected something spectacular, she is very disappointed in herself now that she can't even find a temporary job. Wanting to help her out, he offers a job on the set, warning her about the crappy hours and the low salary, but counting it as something that will get her out of the house. A smile appears on her face as she thinks about the opportunity. Putting the glass down, he asks her to think about the positive things that are happening to her. Moving closer, he puts her hair behind her ear. He starts complimenting her ear, which essentially attracts her to him, and she leans in for a kiss. The kiss turns into a makeout, and soon they find themselves ripping each other's clothes off. As they're getting into it, Raiden's family decides to properly apologize to their neighbor by bringing cookies. Getting to the door, they realize that Raiden's not with them but when they hear a girl moaning. They open the door just to see their daughter on top of their neighbor. Back at the house, Walter tries to warn Raiden about the different sexual diseases, and asks her to wear protection. Fear gets to him, so he asks her not to even see the neighbor anymore, since she doesn't know anything about him. Raiden reminds him that she's not a teenager, so he reminds her that she's still living under his roof. Upset, she gets up and leaves while a knock can be heard on the door. Opening the door, Walter sees a funny-looking man who asks for his buckles back. Despite informing him that he's bought them from a guy, the strange man tries to snatch the belt from Walter's trousers, which only makes him go into karate mode. The guy threatens to go to the police, but Walter doesn't think anything of it. The following morning, Raiden drags Adam to find some outfits for her new job as a pie on set. While she goes through different dresses, he asks her about the job, and when she tells him that it's for the guy across the street, he can't help but cringe. She assures him that he's a movie dude, but he finds it hard to believe her. She gets into the wardrobe, so he takes the chance to mention his gig, and how he has plans for them. As she leaves the stall, he stops talking for a second, given that he's in awe. He asks her to go to a fancy dinner with him, and even reveals that he has a song written for her. She believes him for a second, until he starts goofing around with the lyrics. They settle down on having the best night on Friday, unaware that it will only drift them apart. Later in the afternoon, Raiden can be seen on set while a commercial about a guacamole maker is being directed by her neighbor David. The guy ends up complaining about it not being Mexican enough, so David decides to just give up and have someone else deal with the guy. Grabbing Raiden by the hand, he takes her outside and they leave. As they're driving along the sea, he admits to feeling free, as he has never walked out of the set before. However, she can't help but feel bad for losing yet another job. Amid the chaos, she forgets about her and Adam's plans. While Adam is buying a bouquet and some warm socks for her feet, she spends her day with David at the beach. She finds herself enjoying spending time with him. But once he tells her that she's unaware that the world is just at her fingertips, she starts to realize some things. Despite being late, Adam continues to call her until he has to get on stage. Knowing that she won't be there to hear it, he tells the public that the song is for someone he really likes. Adam pours his heart out in the song, with nothing but sweet words for Raiden. But unfortunately she doesn't show up. After the romantic date at the beach, David drives her back, and as they arrive she keeps the kiss short and sweet. Rethinking her words over and over again, she jumps when she sees Adam on the front porch of her house, remembering their plans as soon as she sees him. Apologizing profusely, she asks for a chance to explain, but he chooses not to listen to her. Confused, because he's never acted that way, she asks him to stop, and he does, only to let her know that despite not knowing what his future is, he knows for sure that she's not in it. Her heart breaks as she watches him drive away. However, all of her thoughts fly off as she becomes surrounded by police cars that soon arrest the whole family. As promised, the funny-looking guy got the police involved, which is why Walter is being arrested. Walter will be there until the morning, while the family is free, but waiting on him. In the morning, the officer informs them that Walter can be granted freedom if they pay $15,000 to bail him out. Grandma Maureen pretends not to have the money and tries to leave, but luckily Carmela remembers all the places where she hides her money. Despite beginning to be hesitant and stingy, Maureen pays the sum and gets her son out of jail. He feels excited and jumps for joy as they drive back to the house. He claims to feel like a new man, and promises a better chance. As they pull up into their driveway, Raiden receives a call from an unknown number. Answering it, she receives the best news possible, a job position at Happerman and Browning. She may have wonderful news, but she doesn't have her best friend to celebrate it with. Lying on her bed, she decides to call him, but once he doesn't answer she leaves a voice note, asking him to call her whenever he feels ready. As time passes and there's no sign of him, she decides to take matters into her own hands. Adam is playing basketball with some of his buddies when an ice cream truck drives into the court. 
Over the speakers, Raiden's voice can be heard apologizing to him profusely. He asks her to stop, promising that he will forgive her. She admits that he was right all along, and also admits how bad of a friend she's been. Instead of letting her finish, he interrupts her to let her know that they're cool. Wanting to get their relationship back to where they left it, she suggests they go somewhere together, but he declines, claiming that he has to pack. Confused, she wonders what he's packing for, so he tells her about the law school in New York. Saddened but understanding, she leaves without saying anything else. The next day, she gets ready for work and arrives there with a big smile. Her boss explains that they had a problem with Jessica, and that's why they needed her out. Raiden settles into her cubicle, ready to finally do what she loves most. From organizing meetings to doing some paperwork, and even getting the gum off her boss's shoe, she does it all. Even though she has to stay some nights overtime to finish what Jessica should have done, she finishes her tasks with understanding and love. Back at the house, Hunter asks Walter to help him make the car for the race on Saturday. He stops the machine he's working out on and tells the boy to call everyone, so they can make the best car ever. Driving into their driveway, Raiden sees David as she parks the car. They decide to catch up, so she tells him about the job, and he lets her know that he's going back to Brazil because he wants to see his family. Again, his words get her thinking, and she struggles to fall asleep the whole night. In the morning, Walter accidentally hits one of the elves in the driveway as they're getting ready to go to Hunter's race, and they try to hide it from Hunter and Carmela. At the race, Raiden, Carmela, and Maureen sit at the bleachers to support Hunter, while Walter is with him, so he can give him a start. The race begins soon, and all of the parents push their kids so they can start moving. However, as Walter pulls the brake, the car doesn't seem to move. They figure it out soon, and Hunter joins the game. He did start last, but it doesn't take him much to pass the other kids and get the number one spot. Unfortunately, as he gets to the end, the brake gets stuck, and the young man goes flying into the lake. Just a couple of seconds later he comes out of the water, without the slightest problem. Raiden spots a woman feeding her child the ice cream Adam would always give her, and it's enough for her to finally chase him. Packing her clothes, she asks Walter if she's making the wrong decision. He takes her hand, and they sit on her bed. Given that she's been a wonderful child, he's always wanted her to get into some trouble and do something interesting at least, which is why he advises her to go to New York and live in the moment. Just a short couple of hours later, she says goodbye to the whole family and gets into the car, ready to see the Big Apple. After a nervous flight, she finally arrives on the streets of New York, and soon finds herself in front of the dorm room where Adam's staying. Anxiously, she knocks on the door, and he answers immediately. She pours her heart out, admitting to not being able to eat, sleep, or breathe without him. As she leans in, she sees a woman sitting on the bed in the room, and immediately assumes the worst. Lost for words, she takes her suitcases and hurries out, but he runs after her. He catches her before she has a chance to get into a taxi to tell her that the girl in the room is just his room monitor, and that Raiden's the one he loves. Staring with hope in her eyes, she leans in and they share their first kiss, after many years of knowing each other. Their smiles grow as she jumps into his arms before he takes her to the apartment. Raiden stays in New York, and her family decides to visit them both. As they're calling on the phone to see what they need and don't need, Adam can't help but be terrified of having all of them over. A great relationship might have come to an end, but a beautiful romance has been born. 